Hey, and welcome back to Chuck's Tuesday Tips. Today I'm going to be working on uh, on ears and earbuds. I've had a lot of requests and a lot of guys um, asking me online on Facebook. They're having trouble with their ear, earbud muscles, ear, and stuff like that. So I'm going to go over the, the whole way I do it. But before I start with pulling the cartilage out, I'm going to take and explain a little bit about how ears work. And I'm going to do that with an ear liner and some clay and the mannequin. And I'm going to do it on the on uh, without it being inside the ear or inside the cape so that you can uh, get a better understanding. I've got my ear liner and a lot of you know from my videos how I do my ear uh, my ear butt muscles out of two ping pong ball size things of clay but I'm going to explain to you how, how it works. A lot of you already know this, but basically, a ear has a lower muscle and an upper muscle in the front of the ear because muscles, they pull like a bicep. So your muscles are going to be in front. They split at the apex, and um, which is here in the middle. So we put them in in two pieces, the upper and the lower. The back, if you'll notice on an ear, if you skin one out and turn it out you'll see that you can see the cartilage right through here on the back point and just to show you what I'm talking about this happens to be a mule deer but it's all I got right now I have a cape that just came in that I haven't um, turned the ears yet on and um, this is gonna get this thing bloody but it doesn't really matter um, if we set it up there and we look close we can see the upper muscle and the lower muscle and I've skinned this out a little bit to show look at that the upper muscle and the lower muscle you can see it right through here there's not a lot of muscle it's just cart uh, just uh, I call it mung slime but you can clearly see that your muscle is uh, all in the front of the ear okay and you can see where it splits at the apex and you can see how nice this mannequin is and accurate how nicely it's the transition is right there and then when we set our ear onto the mannequin uh, this is the ears back position of course you know, pretty much, there it is, right there, you know, it's really not, not as hard or as mysterious as, as people want to make it seem. Now, you'll see a lot of man, uh, mounts that have huge mounts of muscle back behind the ear, but there's really no reason for it to be there, because the ear, like I said, a ear it pulls so the muscle will be in front you know so pretty much here's your ear forward position okay and we just did the ear back this is a full sneak I always put the ears back in a full sneak mostly because like I said it's it's unnatural for the ear to go forward they do that to listen when they're focusing forward but they have to pull their ear that way it's more natural and when it's relaxed you'll always notice the ears go back because that's just a relaxed position so now we're going to jump back over to the other bench for a second and we're going to put an ear in and then come back here and do this again with the skin okay well now we're going to come and I'm going to show how I pull the cartilage out and then I'm going to explain a few things about um, when guys use Bondo why they have trouble with their transition because when you fill the ear up with Bondo and you smush it down, even though you back it up to try to put the clay in there, you've got way too much material in there. It's really tough to make a good transition. Now, I don't fuss with the ear butt detail like a lot of other guys do. At the end of the day, commercial mount, doesn't really matter. So I cut the, uh, the knob off, I call it. I come in here and I score this. with 
with my knife to get it started and I grab a pliers. I come in here on a thick point of the ear, take my pliers and start working it, working with my thumb as close to the, uh, the cartilage as possible so that I try not to tear the ear. Now this buck here is uh, opening weekend of uh, this year's A-Zone season. Basically second week of August. It was shot so the ear is very thin. It's got all kinds of scabs and whatnot in it. But I just keep working this like this. Keeping my fingers as close to the cartilage as I can. Try as much as possible to get it off in one piece. Because we're going to use this for our, uh, our template to trim our ear liner with. Fighting a little dryness on this cape. It's been out a little bit too long. I'm going to have to do the magic dip when I mount it. Which is basically when I redip it in warm water to rehydrate a little bit right before I go put the cape back on the. Uh... And there we go. We didn't quite get it all the way to the tip, but pretty close. So I'll just come back in here and peel some of this. This little bit that's stuck on here. Okay, I'll reinvert my ear. Go. Oh, we got a tear in the back here. I got to back up for a minute and sew a hole. And for that, I just use my basic whip stitch, single thread on a repair, double thread on a seam. This is my rule of thumb. No lock stitch again because you use a lock stitch, you can't move the skin around. So I'm going to whip, whip stitch this up real quick. Now on some of this thin, we got to kind of do tight stitching. There is no hair on here. Now I guess you Bondo guys, if you sew these, sometimes I hear people glue pieces of uh, fabric softener on to plug the holes and all that. And there we go, I'm coming to the end. Going to just wrap it around about three times. Or tight. So now, like I said, back to square one. All right. So this ear liner I use for the examples way too big. So I'll grab a medium black tail and set it on here and. We line up this crease with the crease on the mannequin, on the mannequin ear liner. All these lines line up. That's how we know to set it. We'll trace it out. Trim it up. It. It's gonna fly. Therefore, I'm gonna do one more little thing, and that's I'm gonna make room for that apex part of the ear we talked about. Put some glue down in here. And 
I squeeze it up into the tip of the ear. Got a little hole here where it ripped on the end, but there's no way to sew that. It's truly too thin. We're going to have to card that down. Coat our ear liner. Now, the reason I put that glue way up to the tip is in case when you push this in, sometimes you might squeeze off some of the some of the glue. And my bucket of water handy to clean your hands. Okay, now I'm gonna line this up. Leading edge. Yeah, look how thin this ear is, man. Look how early this is so thin now um we're going to use the stapler the p3 i like to use from Bosch. we'll start and we'll put our top three right here okay hold that really got this major major thin spot right here that's where the ear carding comes in then we'll come in here and put these about a half inch apart around the whole base There we go. I kind of over tuck this part here a little bit. Now that I've done that, we get our famous Coke cut. Coke nut, oh, here I have one right here I can use. Coke nut Pepsi. Cut a little slit in this. Remember the reason for the Coke cup is they're waxed so they won't stick to the glue. I'm going to put my card in here. I'm going to grab this hair here on purpose. Put it under, under this top card. I'm going to go way down in there. Staple it. Where I'm stapling is right along this crease right here. So it holds it tight on that crease. Okay. And then I'll come and do the top. And then I've set the card way down in the ear past where we cut the bottom off. So it's going to hold it nice and tight down there. And I'll come in. Repeat on this one. There we go. Now, of course this is the wrong side. We'll do our earbud all over again. I'm using this glue because I dripped it here. Put a little dip of glue. I like to start on the top muscle. Slide it in. Now if you would actually someday take a junk cape or a, perhaps maybe a uh, cape ear, uh, a deer that come in for a European, you don't need to face. Take an ear, cut it apart, and look at how far up that muscle goes on that apex, just to give you an idea. Okay, so we pushed our other one in. Got it rolled around to the shape going to invert it a little bit and just like I did on the one over there I'm going to put just a little bit of smoothing clay on this right at the apex um, not the apex the back bump whatever you want to call it smooth that out now we'll go over and stick it on there and see how it looks this ear looks a little different than the other ear because uh it's a different deer. This is a black tail. The other was a mule deer. 
The other one had good Wyoming hair. This one has August hair. But you could see the split right here. The transition and everything. So, it's really, you know, and then you can go ahead later when you're set. You see all the little lines come in there and all that. You can get that detail once you go to mount it. This is just a basic, you know, how I get my earbuds achieved. As you can see, it, it's pretty straightforward. It's a great method. It works for me. Worked for my teacher who's mounted thousands of deer and antelope this way over his 30 year career. And uh, I just love it. Now this, when we get it done, we're going to have to card the edges here to get it nice and thin. But look, look how, how thin this early ear is, man. It's really tough. But that's still a good looking ear. So I hope you try my technique, get a, give it at least a chance, and uh, look for further tips now because I got some help. We're going to try to do a few longer ones, more detailed, and we'll see you next time on Chuck's Tuesday Tips.